Harrisburg Giants started uh, around 1890 by Colonel Struthers. Initially, his team was made up of local ball players. But in the 1920s, as he started making money, then he went out and he purchased players, such as Oscar Charleston and Dixon and the Fats Jenkins and so forth. Throughout their period of 24 through 27 in the Eastern Colored League, they did have the second best record in that league. So Harrisburg never won the pennant, but they did have the second best cumulative record and they had a lineup that included two Hall of Famers, Oscar Charleston and Ben Taylor. Whenever the black teams were playing exhibition games against white teams or anybody else, the two players they tried to get in terms of picking up were Oscar Charleston and John Beckwith. And Colonel Struthers had both on his regular payroll. There was also contests in the 1920s between the Harrisburg Giants and the Harrisburg Senators played for the city championship. And usually, the Giants won. We had to come out of the Army and play softball because we wouldn't allow to play baseball. Because Hasbro was bad, man. <laughs> they didn't stop it unwritten. They actually codified that if, if you had a roster with, I think it said more than one, you know. So they, they were absolutely, and in writing, segregating baseball. We could not, in Mississippi, our, our outfit couldn't play it on the same field that they played it on usually think of Pee Wee Reese and Jackie Robinson when you're thinking of black and white early teammates that go on to the Hall of Fame. But 60 years before them, or 57, in 1890, you had Huey Jennings and Frank Grant on the same team. Frank Grant black, Huey Jennings white, that go on to the to the Hall of Fame. The Hasbro Giants was the only team in the Eastern League that was integrated. And we didn't get, it, didn't get that because he was white. You got it because you could play baseball. 30% of the team is white. You know, this isn't just one or two or even four. There's serious uh, representation on this team, which plays in a league, the Eastern Negro League. This was an integrated team in 54. Uh, in fact, one of their early practices is on the very day that Brown v. Board is announced. Well, Harrisburg was starting to desegregate. Uh, high schools were never segregated but they had still had segregated elementary schools up until about 1952, 53, just about these, this, these years. We didn't discriminate between you or you or him because uh, you didn't like it because I didn't like it. No one liked that. 20 or 30% of the people at the games were white. So a lot of whites came to see the Negro League's games play. And, and especially if it's a white team against a black team, then a lot of them came to see that. And then when you were sitting in the seat, the white was sitting over here, and the Negro was sitting back here. If you're a baseball fan, you need to know the history of the Negro Leagues. They would talk about uh, Babe Ruth. They would talk about the Negro Leagues. They would talk about the Josh Gibson. These were men that sacrificed and were denied the opportunity to make a living as baseball players. Because you love the game. That's why you play.